Hey friends, um, welcome to June, yay! I apologize I didn't get May's readings done. Some of you were kind of like sending emails or leaving comments on different videos saying, what the fudge, where is May? Um, and if you follow on the Facebook page, that's a better place to keep updated with what's going on. I'm going to make a video about, um, you know, if, for those of you who have followed me for a long time, you know that I used to be super, super consistent and like ahead of the game. Um, but the last like year and a half to two years has been complete upheaval and like just crazy shit in my life. So I'm going to make a video about that later because there's like a lot of spiritual like lessons and things in that that a lot of people will benefit from, including um, like, you know, how to predict and navigate your way through different things that come up if you were to read your own tarot cards and like, anyway whatever. The thing I wanted to say before we started reading is that moving forward, like after June, yeah, I would say like probably about August of this year, everything, all the ducks should be in a row and things will get back on track so you can look forward to that. Uh, but in advance of that, I wanted to let you know, for those of you who are intending to purchase um, video readings, throughout like the first two weeks of June, there might be a delay in those. I um, am having a nose surgery, my nose is broken and it's causing sinus infections a lot. So I'll have like this big thing on my face. And so um, like a little, uh, what do they call that, a splint? And then maybe some black eyes after that. So I don't know how up for video reading I'm going to be uh, straight out the gate. But I will be keeping on top of email readings and phone readings. So there's that. Um, now, this month, what the reading looks like for you guys is what you can expect in work with your money. Because sometimes those are related, sometimes they're not. In your love life, whether you're single, coupled, or in an on-again, off-again relationship, like an undefined relationship. Maybe it's new and it's not Facebook official. Maybe, um, you know, you're polyamorous. Maybe you're the other woman in a uh, relationship or, I guess, the other man, you know, whatever. Maybe it's a sugar daddy situation or a, su a sugar baby situation. What do they call it when the guy, leave it in the comments if you know, when the guy, is it a kept man? If it's the dude that has a sugar mama? Anyway, yeah, if you know, let me know because I'm curious. And then we're also going to be looking at, you know, just kind of socially, like what do your relationships look like or what do you need to be aware of for this month, um, whether that is friends or family kind of situations. We're going to talk about your lucky day, um, which chakras you need to work on, what is your crystal of the month, uh, so many things in these readings this month. So um, let's just get started with it. Sagittarius, happy June. Um, so we're gonna start with your work life, what you can expect. And they say, you know, think about what it is that you want from work. This is, sorry, the lighting is so shitty. Let me move over. Okay, so think about what it is that you want from work. I call the star card the hope card a lot of times because it's like, you know, sometimes we can have bigger, better things than we even thought possible. We're only limited by our own imagination. So, you know, if you can dream it, you can be it. You can achieve it. Things can flow to you. But you're not really in that state as much as you usually are Sagittarius. Like, you don't have the confidence anymore that you used to. So let's fix that, okay? Because there's all of these good things that can flow to you so long as you believe that they can and that they will. Um, they're saying, like, you do a really good job of focusing on the positive, on what's going right, not on what's going wrong, but you don't necessarily do a good job of um, of really doing that independently, right? Like, you do that well when other people are around. So let's say you're somewhere with somebody and something bad really happens and you're like, you know what, but here's the bright side, like oh, we got a flat tire, but thank goodness we didn't crash when that happened. And thank goodness we have a spare in the back. And, you know, like, we weren't really in a hurry. We have we left early. Like, thank God for that. Like, you, you make those kind of statements, and it's more to keep the other person positive, whereas, like, if it were just you in the car, you'd be like, OMFG, this fucking sucks, right? <laughs> and so they're like, can we try to treat ourselves 
the way that we treat other people? Can we be the way that we are, um, you know, to ourselves, give the same words of encouragement that we would give to somebody else? You know, talk to ourselves like a friend, especially in things regarding work. Um, because if you can do that, the outcomes will be better for you than you even thought possible, okay? So, like, don't get down on yourself if you're having a bad week, if you're not achieving what you typically would achieve. But, like, you know, in certain scenarios, being a huge bitch to yourself works, you know? It's like there's different coaching styles, right? Some coaches will say, you know, you little pussy, like, you can't run to the end of the field, ah. And then, like, that motivates, like, a football player to, you know, get the ball, down the field but other ones they really need to be built up and like that's the magic of like who is the best coach right like somebody who can adapt to that who can sense what each person needs and they're saying you know you can recognize in other people what they need but oftentimes you do the opposite to yourself and so um it's not working for you this month you know, so in regards to your work life, that's kind of where you want to focus your attention and the efforts you want to make. In regards to your money, they're saying, um, you know, it's funny because typically you have a really good emotional relationship with money. Like you can see it as a tool and that helps you to do good in the world or um, – but, like, for some reason, it's a little bit effed up and probably because of the way that you're talking to yourself, <laughs> you know, in regards to work. But they say it's not necessarily even that. It's just, like, things aren't fair right now. Like, sometimes we have really lucky months. Like, let's say you work in sales or you're a waitress and you get, like, you know, really easy money flowing to you. And then, like, sometimes there's just, like, no clients and it sucks. So, like, the restaurant you work in is dead and it has nothing to do with you like if there's no customers you can't serve them you can't get paid and so they're saying um you know so you might be a little bit more cautious with your money this month and the thing is though is when you're Sagittarius especially when you're really really in that positive flow relationship with money and then like you're like tipping really high and things like that it, at coffee shops and you know wherever you go then you tend to see that money come back to you um, even if you're not in a relationship you know like through your work or something that is cash based where you receive tips or commissions you might just be really lucky that everything you buy ends up having like some magical sale when you get to the cash register or something like that. So they're saying, you know, we're not saying go out and spend a bunch to put like, you know, good vibe energy about money into the world because that won't work unless your mindset shifts. What they're saying is we're like, look at the challenges that you're actually facing here and remember like I'm okay and like, yeah, things might be hard now, but I've always been able to overcome any sort of difficulty or circumstance that I face and so this time shouldn't be any different for me okay um in regards to your love life if you are single what I get here is like you might be a little bit worried about that again that lack of confidence which is so strange for such a powerful beautiful fire sign um they're saying you know it's whatever is going on with you it's like your emotions aren't as balanced as they typically are. And so I would be interested. I don't do astrology. I notice a lot of correlations between tarot and astrology. But honestly, it's just like too overwhelming for me to learn that right now. I just don't care enough. But I am interested to know if some of you know if you're astrologers or um, you, have, you watch a lot of astrology videos. Is there something going on for Sagittarius in the month of June that might be making them feel like a little bit emotionally imbalanced in contrast to other months? Um, what they're saying is that as far as, you know, trying to find a mate goes, you might be okay with this whole concept of like, um, I don't need to have full control and like knowing of about like the specific details of what could be coming into my life and just like sort of trusting that it'll be good and it'll be good for me. Um, so like I don't need to go out and try to find a specific type of partner or anything like that. Like I know I can attract that to myself. But what they're saying is there's this fear that you're going to um, maybe attract things that are not good for you, that there'll be lessons instead of forever people or, um, you know, that'll be hard or it'll be the same type of partner that didn't work out before. And they're saying, like, you're so sure of this that that's going to end up being what you attract if you don't shift that mindset. And so they're saying, like, we're not asking you to do anything. We're not asking you to go anywhere. Really, a lot of this work is mental and emotional and clearing away those blockages. Um, they're saying, you know, 
because here's the thing, wherever these kind of mindsets or ideas came from, we have to get rid of them. And it's interesting, like as I work with, you know, so many clients over so many years, it's, you find out that a lot of things that worked for us historically, like in certain moments to get us through certain situations, we adopted those things um, to emotionally balance and get through them, but then we didn't throw them out after, and then we keep applying those kind of mindsets to different situations, and then it becomes destructive, and it becomes a pattern over time. You know, maybe something traumatic happened when you were a kid, so you learned how to disassociate, and so, you know, you don't, like in certain situations and certain types of relationships, we don't necessarily connect to people as much as we um, used to, Right because we're afraid and in you know adult love romantic like soulmate type relationships that doesn't work if you pull away in times of struggle right but it might have helped you to survive and understand a situation as a child and so what they're saying is we want you to consider those kind of possibilities that you know there's a different way to live and this is how we actually heal and this, and so you know showing yourself love and talking about things lovingly and lovingly releasing them is going to get you the quickest results if you're looking for a new partner you know talking to yourself the positive way that you talk about other people always seeing the bright side of things and they're saying that's what's going to take you from being a single person to a coupled person now for those of you who are coupled um they're saying you know you're doing a really good job of allowing your partner to show you love but you're not necessarily thinking about what it is that you want next from the relationship um in regards to like the parts of the relationship that are not necessarily great you kind of just are choosing to overlook them. And again, you know, that's kind of a, one of those things like with the singles where it's like you just, you know, that worked for you before in a different kind of scenario, but now maybe we want to let that go. We want our relationships. We all want to do our own personal growth, you know, as we go through our life course. And so we want to do that separately, but we also want to grow in our relationship as well. Um, so they're saying, you know, whatever is going on in your relationship, like it's good, your partner's showing you love and stuff like that, you're about to enter a new cycle with them. So um, new lessons and new challenges and struggles. And they say for a lot of you that might be taking things to the next level, you know, moving in together, buying a house together, getting married, having a child, whatever that is. Um, now, for those of you in undefined relationships, they're saying there's been a little bit of hard, um, hard truths and stuff like that, but it was all for the highest good. Difficult conversations. Um, like, And now that phase of that undefined relationship is over. And so, you know, you might find things become a lot happier for you. So, you know, whether it's on again, off again, maybe now it's just going to be on again forever. Or maybe you're going to let it go forever and, you know, immediately meet the right person. Or maybe... Um, it's not like official, but now you get that like official title and now you're like really together and you know, whatever. It's that kind of energy. So there's not much more to say right there. Um, in regards to your social relationships, like relationships with friends and family and stuff like that, they're saying that um, for some of you, you might have put a lot of energy, time and love into a certain relationship and now you're just kind of like, okay, I got to walk away from this. Um, you just don't see how it could get better. And so they're like, yeah, you're right. You're not wrong. It is time to just like walk away from it and say, you know what? I love those memories. Bye. Um, and they're saying, you know, these kind of things, like they're hard and they hurt a little bit, but they only make you stronger. And so they're like, you know, this is something you have to do. And you, you know, spent enough time kind of trying to make it work and like lying to yourself about it like for a while. And like, this is especially common in families. You know, maybe there's some sort of a situation in a family where, you know, your family has certain expectations for you to live by, but that's not your inner truth. And so maybe they disown you. You know, you say, I'm not going to be part of your religion anymore, or I'm not going to live my life that way. Like I'm my own person. And then they say, you know what? Um, well, you have to do things like our way or by. And the thing is, is that's really hard and that's really painful. And we feel a lot of guilt and we feel a lot of shame. And we just think like, if I can keep on loving you hard, um, like maybe you'll see that my lifestyle is okay. Like this could be like, for example, like 
if you're gay and your family's not cool with that. Like really horrible, like, you know, like it's very traumatic emotionally when you're rejected by like a friend or a family member. But um, what they're saying is I think that you've put enough effort in and you know that you've put enough effort in that at this point in time, you just have to say, okay, it is what it is and go your own way. And maybe they'll change their mindset eventually and come back and maybe they won't. But you need to do what's best for you and you put a lot of fucking effort into that and love and time and you did your best and it is what it is because you, can, you can't change who you are. You know, your inner truth is your inner truth. Okay, so moving on from there, I want to talk about, let's see, your chakra of the month is the third eye chakra, your lucky day. So that's like about your psychic awareness, opening that up um, and being more in touch with your intuition. Your lucky day is the 11th of June, which is my little baby Gemini's birthday. So I'm happy about that. So much love for me in this Sagittarius video. My best, one of my besties is a Sag, nicest, most wonderful person in the world. Um, and then your crystal of the month is the aventurine. So this is what it looks like when it's polished. This is what it might look like when it is not polished, when it's raw. Um, so you might have one of these at home. If you do, awesome. Cleanse it, charge it so you can use it. And um, if you don't, you could get one from your local crystal shop. You can order one from me as well. If you do get one from me, it comes with um, a video series on how to use crystals. They're already cleansed and charged and ready for use. And then also, um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, it comes with like an info sheet on how to care for it, which angels are associated to it, all the different things it does. So I'll tell you a few things it does that will be helpful for you. So it'll help you to feel more satisfied and like deeply relaxed. This is for comfort and balance and calming like that heart chakra, right? Because we might feel a lot of stress with this emotional shit that's going on. Because like I mentioned, a lot of you are not so emotionally balanced is typical. It's going to help you to open up that heart. Um increases your feelings of being loved, right? So especially in that situation of social stuff where like maybe you need to move on from something, somebody, I mean, because we might be feeling bad, like, oh, my family member, my friend doesn't really love me. Um, they do, they just don't love you. They just don't know how to love you the way you need to be loved, maybe, you know? Um, this increases your ability to be like a good leader. Um, it gives you courage to follow through with things. It grants tolerance for yourself and other people. It decreases like neuroses. It increases your luck and opportunity, which will be helpful with money and work stuff, like I mentioned. Um, it balances out the giving and receiving in our family and in our friendships. So, I mean... You, maybe this could be your last little try before you walk away. I don't know. Um, it gets rid of insomnia, soothes a lot of pain, does a lot of stuff. Correlates to the heart chakra. So that's that. Um, the other themes that I wanted to talk about is symmetry, okay? Solid foundations are grounded in the intricate process of change. So if something isn't working, what do we do? We change it. If um, you fuck up a recipe, right? You put too much... Um, well, let's see. What would be a good example? Let's say that I'm making cookies and I accidentally put an extra egg in my cookies. Okay. Then I'm going to add more flour, more sugar, more brown sugar, more chocolate chips, and I'm just going to make a bigger batch. I'm going to change it. Right. And because that would make good sense to have like a solid, awesome cookie. If I don't change it, my cookies are going to be nasty and nobody's going to want them and I will have wasted my time and beat myself up over that, right? So when something isn't working for us, we need to adapt and change and then things will get better, right? Solid foundations are grounded in the intricate process of change. Okay, so there's that. Um, let's talk about this card right here. This is about your confidence, your solar plexus chakra. Um, but it says communication. So why does it say that if we're talking about, you know, this correlation to our personal power and stuff like that? They're saying like your personal power comes through your ability to communicate. And they're saying like, you're going to have to communicate some things that um, maybe are challenging, but you have um, 33 is like the number of like the most divine, you know, like um, Jesus, Buddha, Moses, like the heavy hitters of um, spirituality, okay? They're going to help you 
create more balance in your life. You, you're going to either be able to pray to them, like you, you could use that as like a God energy, right? Um, if you pray to God or Jehovah or Allah or whatever, the universe um, directly, like you're going to communicate and ask for help and feeling confidence to create more balance. Um, this is about having conversations that are not always easy with other people and with yourself for that reason. And so, um, you know, kind of pumping yourself up to do that is going to be very important for you this month. And then um, along with that, you also have this energy of like, once we find that balance, new beginnings come, but um, we're only able to do that if we can love ourselves first. Okay. So this is again, now talking about the throat chakra and the things that we say and um, monitoring our fears with this orange color here. Like, what are we afraid of? Why are we afraid of it? It's not even logical. Like, let's get past that. Okay, because this is how we're going to expand out new beginnings that are prosperous and wonderful. And I feel like there was something I wanted to mention about that one. Um, I love and believe in myself and I make my own dreams come true. Um, I guess that's kind of it. You know, basically you are who you are. Your shortcomings and um, your, you know, wonderful attributes all in one. And so, I mean, we don't have to necessarily say like lie to ourselves and say, you know what, these flaws that I have, I really love them. But if we're aware of them and we're aware of our own personal power and our confidence, we can change them. A lot of things, you know, we can change a lot of things. We can change things about our, we can even change our gender nowadays. Okay. So there is no excuse to not like learn and grow. Um, so anyway, what will help you to clear out your mind and stuff like that is this rainbow energy. Like, so basically the point is going out to connect to spirit and nature and like maybe allowing the sun light to hit your skin or your face or hit you like right here in that third eye chakra. So with this one, they're saying, you know, you've got to lighten up. You've got to feel more alive. You've got to feel like a little bit more joy and happiness. Like we've got to shift those things back into balance. Your emotions are a little bit out of whack this month. And so they're saying, um, you know, help me to awaken my vitality, aliveness, and divinity. And going out in nature is really going to help you with that. If you see a rainbow over the course of June, or you see like a sign or a t-shirt, like rainbows are a sign like, hey, pep it, pep it up, buttercup, because you are a bucket of sunshine and, um, you know, like we're all going to suffer if you don't, if you don't, um, get those emotions back the way that they usually are. I have unlimited potential. Only good lies before you. Like, I mean, any changes that you make are going to not necessarily be easy or feel comfortable initially, but they will be so good for you down the road and you'll just grow and be better and better and better as a result. And the more Sagittarius is that do that, the more you inspire the rest of us shitheads in the Zodiac and, you know, the better the world becomes. We all want to be like you. It's amazing. Um, so don't let us down with your, with your sad ass attitude. We love you. Love yourself. You know, you love us so hard. Love yourself. Let's do it. Okay. Bye. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20 minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!